46 years is a long time for a 19 year old to go to prison and be there for the rest of their lives. If you commit this kind of crime against the people who protect society, you actually deserve the death penalty. I don't see him as a violent man. I don't see him as a violent person. I don't see him as what they portrayed him to be. We're talking about the parole, the possible parole of cop killers. And yes, they're guilty then, and they're guilty now, and no cop killer should ever walk the face of the earth. It is important that people understand that we did not receive a fair trial. There were multiple cover-ups in this case. But make me, let me make this point especially clear. Since 2002, my first pro hearing, I expressed remorse for the loss of life in this case. All right? Um, I understand the devastation um, by anyone losing their loved one. Uh, whether I'm guilty of it or not guilty of it, it is a loss. So the expression of remorse is part of my own humanity. The nature of the case, the nature of the crime, as one that can never change, but nonetheless is held against me. Uh, and so, I'm still in prison. This is a photo of myself. At, um, at the funeral. I could not, still could not believe that he was gone. There was a time when I kept setting the table with his dish. And then I realized, I said, I have to stop doing this. You know, you can't, he's not here. You know, he's not coming. It just never, never goes away. The hurt never goes away. On May 21st, 1971, I was waiting for Joe to come home. And there was a knock at the door, and I looked out. It was raining, and I could see the police lights, the lights. No sirens, just the lights. And they took me in the police car to my father's house in Queens Village. My father got in the car with me, and then we went to Harlem Hospital. When we got to Harlem Hospital, as I was starting to get out of the car, my father grabbed my arm and he told me that he was no longer alive. And then we went into Harlem Hospital. Anthony Bottom has never admitted that he killed my husband, Joe. He has shown no remorse. All he's looking for right now is to get out of prison. The whole black nation has to be put together as a black army. And we're gonna walk on this nation. We're gonna walk on this racist power structure. And we're gonna say to the whole damn government, Stick him up, motherfucker. This is a hole up. We come for what's ours. Being part of the Black Panther Party gave you a sense of belonging, a sense of manhood, a cause, right? the idea that Black men armed and prepared to fight for the rights of black people was exciting. You know, it was something that was intriguing. So when we look at what was going on at that time, we believed 
for the most part, we were indeed engaged in a revolution in this country. What we are seeing today in terms of the number of people being killed, particularly young black unarmed men being killed by police officers across this country, right? Back then, it was being done with impunity. The police in our community occupy uh, our uh, area, our community as a foreign troop occupies territory. And the police are there not to, uh, in our community, not to uh, promote our welfare or uh, for our security and our safety, but they're there to contain us, uh, to uh, brutalize us and murder us. There was no uh, cameras. There weren't no dash cams. It was the Black Panther Party who took it upon themselves to first begin the cop watch, right? Uh, and develop the kind of forms of security and let them know that there will be others who are going to be watching what you're doing, right, in the name of the law. Uh, in, in terms of having been engaged in struggle, uh, I think it was noble. I think that's a noble act for any person uh, to fight for what they know is their human and inalienable rights. Can you catch? Why are you being hard here? Can you catch? Let's see you catch. Go hit the chest, hit the floor. Oh, we got it that time. Good job. My mom was pregnant with me when he went to prison. Um, when I was born, he was in prison can say maybe about 10 times I recall seeing him. Um, most of it was my adult life. My dad growing up in San Jose, you know, working mom, working dad and things like that. But then when you go out into the community in Oakland and San Francisco, you don't see that. He didn't see that. He saw the brutality and things like that. He saw the moms and the kids um, struggling and asking for money for food and things like that. And I think that's what prompted him. Like, everybody should live like I'm living. So why not go out and help a community, help, you know, get with a group of people that are thinking like me so that we can grow. I don't see him as a violent man. I don't see him as a violent person. I don't see him as what they portrayed him to be. He's always been loving and caring and want to know what I'm doing, making sure that I'm getting good grades, want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing, staying on the right track. I just feel like if they can have the opportunity to see what we see in him, you know, maybe things will be different. But I just feel like with everything that's going on, they're trying to keep him in this shelter, in this little box. They don't want him to be able to spend time with his kids and grandchildren and stuff like that, you know. Um, he's never met my son. Aren't they there to rehabilitate? Right. You know? He's been there, what, 46 uh. years? <laughs> How long does it take? <laughs> you know, I mean, and then there's other people that have killed people in our home. Mm -hmm. Are they rehabilitated? You know, it's like, come on. <laughs> How long does it take? By, um, endurance of nearly half a century in prison uh, is more, more or less due to the politics of this particular case. If I was a common criminal, the greater probability that I've been out a long time ago. Uh, when we see the PPA adamantly opposing our release, or they try to vilify us and call us terrorists, all right, that's politics. They quantify uh, their, their position in political terms. When 25 years came up, I just knew my dad was coming home. I just knew my dad was coming home. <sighs> and now it's almost 25 years later from his first parole. So, it is not for me to forgive anyone their trespasses, so to speak. It's not for me, that's for God. And when Anthony Bottom and Herman Bell meet their God, whoever their God is, he is going to put justice 
where it belongs. 